Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So we're getting ready to start our next job here. And what we have is another spray welding repair job that we're gonna do. And this is a spindle, what looks like the, it looks like the end of an axle really, but it's a spindle off of a Porter cable sander. And it's a, it's a model G8 sander. It's a very old sander and it belongs to one of my viewers. And this was a piece that was uh, sent in to me uh, quite some time ago. He asked me if I'd be uh, willing to help him with this repair. And I thought this would be a great job for the channel here since we could do a little bit of spray welding here. So what we have is a, a damaged seal journal. This is a very common problem that I've, that I've seen in, you know, in my career, a lot of the work that I've done, you know, you have your bearing journals and you have a seal journal that helps keep the oil and grease from coming out from where your bearings are. And so a typical problem with uh, shafts that rotate with an oil seal is that they eventually just wear a groove in there. And that's what's happened right here. You just got a, you got a groove that's wore into the seal journal that has to be built up. And so this is a great application for the metallizing process or the spray welding process. So that's what we're going to use this. Uh, we're going to we're going to fix it with the metallizing repair process here. So the um, the kind of the odd thing about this size right here, especially since it being such an old machine, is that it doesn't measure exactly on what would I would I would consider a nominal size. This is measuring right at uh, 1.403 or 1.404, if I remember right. Let's get in there and get another measurement there. So uh, right there, about 1.403 and a half. By the way, this is my new Lufkin mic that I found whenever I was in Denver. Paid 20 bucks for it there. Pretty cool score. I already checked it. It's dead nuts on size. I just love it. But uh, so we're at what I would call one and 13 30 seconds. And this is still good turn diameters on both sides of that groove. So I know that that's what that size is supposed to be. So that's what we're gonna bring it back to. I'm not gonna change it. We're not gonna turn it down to one and three eighths is what you would typically see something like this at, you know, 1.375, you know, a more nominal size or you know maybe even a metric but we know that since, since this is american made and it's very old this is not a metric size so maybe they did intend on it to be a one and 13 30 seconds oil seal diameter but we will go down to the uh, we're going to use the victor lathe use our four jaw chuck to chuck this thing up get it running true and uh, start our repair process okay we're going to use the four jaw to hold this piece just take note that i I wire brushed the uh, edges there just to get the paint off of it so that whenever we chuck on it here that we've got a good true surface that we're chucking on and we're not trying to push on paint. I've already preset the jaws where I wanted it so we can slide it up in there and we'll probably just hang it out probably right about there. I don't like spraying very close to the jaws just so that all that dust and heat ate right there up on the uh, the four jaws. So. I think that's going to be a good distance away from it right there. All right, not too bad, just over 50 thousandths. We'll see how concentric it's running. We'll move the indicator out here and check it. We'll go ahead and check this bearing journal right here. See where we're at. Got about a half there. I've got my old live center that I use for any kind of welding or spray welding operations in there. And you can see that we're, we're running true. It's got a little jump in there, but nice and straight. Gonna apply our masking compound on there now. Just 
using that stuff right there. Solution 103. Yeah. Alright, we'll let that spin up until it dries. Before I get started cutting it, I always double check my measurement. And I'm just going to say that's uh, 1.403 what I'm miking so and I just write it right here on the compound 1.403 just use a marker or a sharpie and then uh, that way I know whenever I'm going and I'm doing my turning back to size I have my size reference right here just touching off I'm going to set a zero here and we'll do our undercut to clean up that groove there Come back and take. Let's take another uh, five thousandths and see if that cleans that up. If not, we'll go another five. So it looks like it got it right there. So we're twenty-five thousandths deep on our undercut. All right, we're gonna come back and I'm gonna set up the uh, quick change here to cut a fine pitch. All right, we got it set at 26 threads per inch. I'm gonna go another 15 thousandths on the dial here. We'll make one scratch pass and then pull out the end there. Just like that. And that thread helps give that powder uh, more surface area there to bite and hold on to whenever it's uh, whenever it's sprayed and helps bond to that surface. Now when I go to do this spray, I don't necessarily need that center in there. It's not going to warp it or anything and cause it to run out. So I'm just really, I had the opportunity to move this out of the way and get my fire cloth in there. But I wanted to point this out. This is something I always do too. You know, I've got the, the whey oil on the machine here. But whenever I go to spray, I just go ahead and I wipe the ways off to get this oil off of it just to keep any of the dust from sticking to them even the dust that's on the fire cloth itself i've got a brand new fire cloth so it doesn't have much on it yet but that's something that i always did was just uh, clean these things off and get the oil and uh, help get any of that overspray of the powder from sticking onto the ways but also remember if you're doing this I know a bunch of you guys out there have been collecting these uh, metal, metalizing rigs. Whenever you get through spraying and you're letting it cool and you're getting ready to come back and do your uh, machining, before you move the carriage, go ahead and come back and wipe these ways down off again just to get any kind of dust off of the ways. All right? So I always put my fire blanket over the ways whenever I do, do the spraying. And that's another reason why I clean the ways off. I don't want the oil getting into the, the, uh, the fire blanket here. So this is just a fiberglass blanket here. This was actually given to me by one of my viewers a while back. And this has been my go-to blanket. Uh, make sure that it's not going to get wrapped up in the chuck there. So always make sure that it's not sticking up. It's going to get caught in the chuck. But um, always make sure that you use one of these if you're going to do any kind of welding on the machine. Just helps protect the ways. All that powder that's coming out in a molten form, uh, so a lot of that powder is coming around that. 
and it deflecting off and it may come down and try to stick to the ways uh, but you can pick these up from any of your uh, standard you know industrial sources for uh, tooling and, and uh, places like that so just make sure you have you one of these and uh, use it anytime you're gonna uh, do any kind of spray welding or or welding on the machine all right we are ready to spray i've already got my powders mixed up we got the caps off of them just so i can grab it and go this is going to be the bond coat right here and then this is the uh, top coat this is the build-up coat right here that's machinable i uh, also want to point out give a thanks to uh, insize for the uh, calipers they sent me we're going to be uh, using these today right there and we are ready to go we'll do a preheat get it warmed up and then we'll start our spray okay Bond coat, now we're going to go with our build up coat. Give it a check with the caliper. So I'm going to go about 1.450, so we're about halfway there. Just about there. I just need to get a little bit in the, both ends of it. It's built up in the middle, good. about where we need to be. Check the other side. Let the powder fall back into the uh, cup there. And that should be built up good there. All right, we've got it built up good. I'm gonna go ahead and move my fire blanket out of the way. Hold it back up. And like I said before, go ahead and go ahead and wipe the ways back off there. Make sure we don't have any of the dust on there. Just get 
that out of the way. But we're gonna go ahead and uh, I got my fan over here somewhere. I gotta find, I'm gonna put a fan on there. Turn this down low. And uh, let the fan go ahead and cool this thing down uh, nice to uh, ambient temperature. So here's the tool that we're gonna use. This is a piece of Micro 100. And I've already uh, rehoned the edge right there. This is the same tool that we used on the last spray welding job. It was still good, but I just rehoned the corner so that we have a slight radius there and then dressed the top of it with the uh, diamond hone. So this one's ready to go. I usually try to touch off right near the center. That's usually the highest spot. back off there and just make us a cleanup cut. get a little heavier back here towards the back. Just try to get that peeled off there. So there's our first cleanup cut right there. Looking good. Okay, we've got we got 25 thousandths to come off of it. getting the uh, dust off of it. The uh, surface is looking good. Spray well did a great job and we should be getting down to our final cut right here. So we got 14 thousandths to come off of it. Kicked up our speed for this final cut. Improve the surface finish, which you can see is looking nice. And while we're here, we'll go ahead and scrape this uh, excess spray off. And sometimes all you got to do is just come in here like this, bring your tool in there very close, and just spin the chuck by hand and just knock it right on off there, just like that. Do the same same thing up here. Come in here to a low spot. Just simply knock it off. Just like that. I do want to cut a slight chamfer on that edge because it's it was a pretty sharp edge there to begin with. Pull my fume extractor over here and turn it on for that little bit of dust there. Oh yeah. Just getting rid of the surface, the easy stuff, and then I'll use some uh, emery cloth to give it a nice polish there.
All right, our journal size that we turned is right where we want it. It's uh, 404, so I actually mic'd it at 403, but I'm gonna give it a polish just to, just to polish everything nice and smooth and brighten it up very lightly using some uh, 220. Just very light, I'm not pulling very hard on this. I'm just wanting to brighten it up, making sure the surface is smooth, get rid of the tool marks. Just like that. I'm just gonna take this out right there on the corner where I chamfered it. I wanna soften that corner up right there. Help that oil seal be able to slide up over that, that edge. I put a couple little scratches in it doing that, so I'm going to come back and hit this again just to kind of blend it out of there. Just like so. Now, let's go ahead and brighten up these two bearing journals. All right, and last step, we're going to use some fresh gray scotch bright. Just lay it in there on my finger like that. Just trying to hold it with my thumb from sliding out. Really brighten it up, makes it look really good. And you can do the same thing with the shaft there if you need to to polish it up some. There we go, we've got a nice finished seal journal on size that is just perfectly smooth, looks good. All right, guys, this is finished up. It is ready to go back to Dan. We had a successful repair on this. Our metallizing powder sprayed in good. We had a good build up there, and even our turn finish there turned out beautiful. It looks great. This is what you're hunting for whenever you're doing these kind of build up repairs with the metallizing powder. So we have a, a good part that's ready to go back in the service, and it is, it is ready to go. So hope you guys enjoyed watching this project and this repair and come on back for some more, all right? See you guys then.